Hello there, how are you today? Today I'm going to show you how I converted my 3D printer into a CNC machine. We will go over the do's and the don'ts. If you watched any of my previous videos, you probably already know that I have a Delta 3D printer. My printer is the Micromake D1. There is many YouTubers that converted their 3D printer into a CNC machines, but I never seen a Delta conversion. Just a quick side note, the reason I made this project at all is because I needed a CNC for a project I'm working on. To do the same work using a company would cost more than an entry-level CNC machine, so I decided to let my 3D printer handle this thing for me. Back to the video. I already had everything I needed in order to do this project. 3D printer and all rotary tool with extension cord. I just needed to connect the two pieces together. The installation was extremely easy. I took apart the hot end of the 3D printer, shaved small piece from the extension cord to fit the effector perfectly. I just want to mention that this is not the original effector that comes with this Delta 3D printer. I got it from Thingiverse and it works great. I then screwed the bolts back on. I connected the rotary tool and everything works as expected. Plug and play solution. This is the foam I talked about earlier. I used double sided tape to hold it on the printer bed. I then replaced the bit with something that looks more appropriate for this task. The next thing you need to do when you're ready to start is to set the Z position of the printer. Just above the model surface will be fine. You also need to set the X and Y axis to the zero position of the model as you set it in the software that generated the decode. I was pretty happy with these results, so we can skip to something more interesting. God damn it! Don't forget your Z-axis tuning. I'm about to learn an important lesson about this. As you can see, this is the main problem that comes to mind when converting a Delta 3D printer. The machine is not so rigid. My specific printer is even in worse condition. Yeah. Now let's try to engrave a sample square on this. I'm almost sure that this is made of aluminium. Looks pretty good. Let's step it up. Nice, I'm happy with this. I then decided to do the same on a portable charger I have made out of aluminium. Remember I told you I'm about to learn a lesson about the Z-axis? Well... I'm not sure who was the fault here, the z calib or the G-code settings. But the engraving bit drilled inside the lithium battery pack and punctured it. The room got filled with smoke in a few seconds and the battery pack spit it fire. Lithium batteries can burn up to 600 degrees Holy and produce toxic smoke. Fortunately, the wind was in my favor and helped me clear the smoke from the room. My advice is, don't try to engrave lithium batteries, it may kill you. Now we needed to clean the mess I made.
I removed the eated bed. It doesn't look like there is any damage to the electron. But then I removed the glass bed to find out that it got broke because of the extreme heat. I couldn't remove the sticker from the bed, so I cleaned it as good as I could. Flatten the surface. And glue the new sticker on it. I still have two problems with the current setup. First, it was very loud. Second, that the extension cord of the rotary tool contributed to the flimsiness of the 3D printer. But where can I get a model for free? The vacuum cleaner motor operates on 65 watts. But it's good enough for what I need. I quickly disassembled it. And extracted the motor out of it. Do you believe in miracles? To my surprise, the thread size was the same size as the rotary tool. Hmm. But the hole needed some small adjustments. I clamped the motor and drilled the hole. I then finished it with the rotary tool. Perfect. Now I need a new mount for the motor. I used the effector model from Thingiverse and upgraded it to Fiddy Motor. I forgot that I reset the printer calibration setting so the model wasn't size accurate. I changed it a bit and printed another one. I decided to use brass cylinder threaded grounds that I melted inside the ABS plastic using my soldering iron. Next, I detached the motor wires from the PCB. And screwed the motor in place. Remove the effector from the printer and connect the new one. Now I need to find a way to control the motor speed. I've built this hot wire machine to cut the foam a couple of weeks ago.
but unfortunately the foam doesn't cut as well as I expected. I used the motor PWM controller for it, so it will fit perfectly for this motor. The connections are pretty straightforward. Power in, motor out, potentiometer and on off button. I've soldered the motor wires to the motor and it's done. I used a 12 volt power supply with 8 amps, but I wasn't so happy with the results. So I replaced it with a laptop power supply that works on 20 volts. Much better. Number wise, it doesn't look like the new configuration was better, but I can swear it sounds better. Let's test it out. Ignore the poor positioning of the phone. It doesn't really matter, I just wanted to make sure that everything was working fine. As you can see, the result looks very promising. So why not step in up to something more interesting? This is old iPhone SE that is no longer in use. Let's make it special. I tried to be very careful with this one. I let it do one dry run above the iPhone surface. If we ignore the full positioning, we can see that it looks very good. This is what happens when your printer is not calibrated properly. This is a small glimpse to the project I talked about. This is the raw shape of the foam that I need to engrave. In this model, the calibration is not crucial as the previous ones. I designed a neat shape for the components in Tinkercad, but the print area of the bed is too small to fit everything together, so I split it in two pieces exported it and converted the STL to G-code using ESDL cam. As you can see, the result was pretty good and it could even be better if I'll use a finishing tool. If you find my video interesting, please leave a like. If you find it really interesting and would like to see more of my videos, please subscribe and hit this bell notifications. If you didn't like that, there is the other button there. You can push it if you want.
Okay, now let's summarize. You can convert a Delta 3D printer into a CNC machine, but don't expect it to cut metals or wood. The structure of Delta printers is not designed to withstand the resistance. If you're in the same situation as I am and need to cut foam, it can be perfect for it. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Do you like the video? You can see my other videos. I made some good videos.